Does our universe really represent the whole? Or is it ultimately just a fleeting moment in an eternal cycle of universes? Well, British physicist and Nobel Prize winner Roger Penrose knows exactly how to answer this question. He is convinced that the cosmos is subject to a perpetual cycle of destruction and rebirth. But that's not all. Penrose actually believes he has finally found solid evidence for his cyclical model. Specifically, the British scientist has identified a series of mysterious hawking points in the microwave background, and thus possibly the places where the supermassive black holes of a previous universe once evaporated. What is now part of the basic knowledge of cosmology was, at best, an exotic idea about 100 years ago. In fact, until the middle of the 20th century, most researchers believed that the universe was an eternal and, above all, unchanging construct. Of course, stars could be born and die in the cosmos, planets could collide with each other, and civilizations could flourish and perish. But on a large spatial scale, and over long periods of time, so the assumption at the time, the universe always retains its fundamental appearance. And yet, at some point, astronomers realize that distant galaxies are apparently moving away from the Earth, and that the speed of this galactic escape is even increasing with distance. Many detailed follow-up studies later, experts finally uncovered the true cause of these strange galaxy movements. Strictly speaking, it is not the galaxies that are moving through space at all. No, it is rather space itself that is constantly expanding. In other words, the experts have realized that the universe is expanding, and that the idea of a rigid, unchanging cosmic world had finally been abandoned. And yet, it took until the 1960s before experts realized that this expansion process, when viewed retrospectively, leads to an extreme, original singularity, and that the universe came into being as a result of this, some 13.8 billion years ago, in the context of the Big Bang. Such a radical, astronomical revolution had perhaps not occurred since the acceptance of the heliocentric worldview. Even though we now know, of course, that the Sun is by no means the center of the whole cosmos, but merely marks the center of our home system. But as so often, the groundbreaking realization was also linked to some profound questions this time. If the universe really was born in the Big Bang, what happened before that? What did space look like before it began to expand, and how long did it remain in this primal state? Added to this is the fact that, according to our understanding, Everything that has a beginning also has an end. But what will the cosmic finale look like? Roger Penrose and the Cycle – The Eternal Cycle of the Cosmos? Although these complex questions are just as old as the Big Bang Theory itself, we have still not found any clear answers to them. And even in their theoretical considerations, there is no real agreement among scientists. On the contrary, the world of astronomical research has long since split into two camps on this issue. Stephen Hawking, for example, believed that dealing with the question of what was before the Big Bang is just as nonsensical as asking what is actually north of the North Pole. Since time itself only began with the Big Bang, nothing could have existed before that. On the other hand, there are the approaches of Roger Penrose. As a theoretical physicist, the Brit had already worked with Hawking in the 1960s, and with him he delivered a pioneering breakthrough in the field of singularities and black holes. In 2020, Penrose was again honored with the Nobel Prize in Physics. Well, or at least with half of it. While he received one half of the prize for the, quote, discovery that the formation of black holes is a robust prediction of general relativity, the other half went to Reinhard Genzel, and Andrea Ghez for the detection of a supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. But if we now detach ourselves from the world of Nobel Prize awards and return to the actual topic, we see that the veteran physicist initially approached the question of the origin and fate of the universe from a rather philosophical direction. First of all, Penrose had to define what actually counts as universe and what as non-universe. And ultimately, the conclusions of the British scientist can be summarized as follows. The main characteristic of the universe is motion, which in turn requires the existence of at least two material or energetic objects whose distance changes over time. However, if there is none or only one of these objects, we are dealing with a conditional space that cannot be measured. In other words, 
It's impossible to say whether space is infinite or whether it has been compressed into an ultra-small volume, as in the case of a singularity. In this context, concepts such as speed and time completely lose their meaning. And according to Penrose, it can be assumed that the universe will one day return to such an extreme state, from which it can explode into its new existence. Accordingly, in a very distant future, the last elementary particle will have decayed and the expansion of space will have destroyed the last photon. In this model, the universe will continue to expand until all matter has decayed and become light. And this bizarre environment, in which nothing has any time or space reference to each other, finally paves the way for a new Big Bang. And just to be clear, according to Penrose, this is by no means an astronomical one-off, but an overarching pattern that repeats itself over and over again. As mentioned at the beginning, the Brighton is convinced that the cosmos has a cyclical character, characterized by destruction and rebirth. But assuming that the eternal resurrection of the cosmos is real, shouldn't there be some tangible evidence for it? Well, according to Penrose, it actually exists, and we have already found it. Do Hawking points originate from a previous universe? In detail, Penrose, together with Daniel Ann, Christoph Meisner, and Powell Nurowski, has detected a remarkable signal in the cosmic microwave background that should lead us straight to the true character of the universe. Both the Planck and the WMAP satellite data contain numerous circular spots with a diameter roughly corresponding to that of the full moon. But what do such spots have to do with a cyclic cosmos? And why did the experts overlook them for so long? Well, basically, the cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB for short, is a relic from the early days of the cosmos, created around 380,000 years after the Big Bang, during the so-called recombination epoch. And indeed, the background radiation still fills the entire cosmos today. And since it was already predicted in the standard model, its actual detection is considered outstanding evidence for the Big Bang theory. In line with this, Penrose now believes, however, that the detection of the so-called Hawking points is considered outstanding evidence for the cycle theory. The bottom line is that the aforementioned spots correspond to multiples of the average CMB temperature fluctuations. The Planck and WMAP data had identified these anomalies in exactly the same places, and they had been overlooked until now because it was believed that cosmological inflation would have completely erased such features. A brief explanation. Experts refer to a phase of extremely rapid expansion of the universe immediately after the Big Bang as cosmological inflation. And while the cosmic growth spurt lasted only a tiny fraction of a second, it's thought to have increased by at least a factor of 10 to the power of 26 during that time. Or to put it more vividly, the area that today corresponds to the entire observable universe initially had a diameter that was far smaller than that of a proton, and then it suddenly expanded to a diameter of 10 centimeters. And the cyclic models also know such phases of inflation, with the small but crucial difference that they locate them in the time before the Big Bang. In other words, inflation results from the exponentially expanding distant future of an earlier eon, that is, of an earlier epoch of the universe. And as mentioned, Within the cyclic model, there is an infinite sequence of such eons, each of which has its own Big Bang that marks the continuation or the exponentially expanding distant future of the preceding eon. Interestingly, the adjustment from eon to eon is permissible from both a mathematical and a physical point of view. After all, the conformal compression of the cold distant future with low density coincides with the conformal expansion of the hot, dense Big Bang of the following eon. Well, with one exception. On paper, the supermassive black holes do not adapt so smoothly to the next eon. In fact, at the end of the universe, they would have almost completely swallowed up the galaxy clusters in their vicinity before they themselves finally completely evaporated into Hawking radiation. However, due to the so-called conformal squeeze, all of the radiated energy passes into the subsequent eon in the form of a single Hawking point. The photons that are created in the process scatter in an expanding region, but they are only released when they finally appear in the microwave background radiation of the following eon. The corresponding region would again look like a disk to us, with the diameter of our full moon, 
and it seems that we can actually see such an effect in the CMB sky. In other words, the mysterious spots could mark the places where the black holes of the previous universe left their hawking points in the background radiation. However, whether we are really dealing with a real cosmic obituary is anything but undisputed among experts, but Roger Penrose remains calm. The Brighton remains unwavering in his belief in the idea of a cyclic cosmos and replies to his critics that black holes were once also dismissed as a mere mathematical gimmick. But as we all know, we are now smarter, and who knows which of today's still unconventional theories will one day also become astronomical consensus. And now you can become a subscriber of our astronomical content. Please feel free to click on the thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.